Hello everyone, back tuning into today's first video, going to have a look at the weather next week, 10 days. Well, today's first video is to take us to around the 27th of uh, December, so we're going beyond the Christmas period um, with today's first video. I think this evening we may do an ensembles watch, so we'll have a look at all the um, GFS ensemble members, see what they're all showing for the Christmas and uh, New Year period. So that'll be coming up with you on the home page, probably at around uh, 6 or 7 o'clock this evening. But this video is going to have a look at weather next week, 10 days. We'll also have a look at what's happening in terms of the Art Constellation, the North Atlantic Constellation. We'll have a look at the uh, situation of the Stratosphere over North Bowl as well. So um, stand by, going to be a bit of an uh, extended update for your Sunday afternoon. Big thanks for tuning in on your Sunday, uh, of course. Um, just say that Chris Shop is still open. So if you've got any Chris Shop to do at Amazon between now and Christmas, just click the green button that says Gas Chris Shop. It takes you to our Chris Shop page. And then from there, go through the Amazon banners because you've gone from Gas Lovies to Amazon. We get a ready fee on the things that you are buying. And a big thank you to everybody for um, doing that uh, once again. Still got a few more days to get those Christmas presents to you. But, of course, don't leave it much longer. Time is now getting very short. A week today, it will be uh, Christmas Eve. And just say that next Sunday on Christmas Eve, that's when we'll be doing the weekend forecast, by the way, not Saturday um, next week. Right, so getting on with today's video, uh, we are seeing weather on the change uh, now. So outbreaks of rain pushing south and east, what's something quite heavy this afternoon. And that's going to be introducing us to a much milder uh, push of air as we go through next week. However, this mild, these mild temperatures may not um, get into eastern parts of the country as quick as we first thought, because we may well get problems with fog through the early part of this week. So this is from the Euro 4 model. This is the visibility forecast for midnight on uh, Tuesday, so Monday night to Tuesday. These red areas are where we've got poor visibility. You can see that for much of central and eastern England, we have got some very poor visibilities coming up indeed. And that is indicative of fog. So we may well have problems with dense fog, I think, as we go through the early part of coming week, this area of high pressure. And that's going to limit the potential for the temperatures to become very mild. I think eventually those very mild temperatures do get through, but for eastern part of the country, it may not be until Wednesday and Thursday that those very mild temperatures get through. These dense uh, fog patches could well linger on all day, and it will make things feel very cold, even if technically the air is uh, reasonably mild. So watch out for fog in the early part of this week across particularly England, and particularly central and eastern parts of England as well. This hour central temperature is looking provisional up to the uh, 16th. We uh, currently stand at uh, <coughs> excuse me 13.9 degrees, which is an, anom an anomaly of one degree colder than average. So it has been a colder than average first half to uh, December. That temperature will get a bit of a lift up as we go through... Um, the coming week, we are going to see milder conditions eventually getting through. It may take a little while, though. So perhaps this um, won't go up, this central temperature, quite as much as we uh, first anticipated. Certainly the first half of the month, though, is coming out colder than average quite solidly. This is the Arctic Constellation observed and uh, forecast chart. So the black line here tells us where we've been with the Arctic Constellation. The red lines at the end where the GFS assembles forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. Remember, this is just an index that's reflecting the state of the atmosphere. It's not driving anything. just tells you uh, what the atmosphere is doing. So when the Arctic Oscillation is in its negative phase, you've got high pressure and blocking over the pole. Uh, and consequently, that's pushing cold air out of the pole down into the mid latitudes. When you've got um, a positive Arctic Oscillation, you've got low pressure up over the pole, you're strengthening the polar vortex, and typically you're strengthening the westerlies through the Atlantic and into Europe too. Now, since the uh, middle of November, this period just here, we've actually been negative with the uh, Arctic Oscillation. So about a month of negativity of the AO. That's where we are right now. We're still just about negative, but in the next few days, coming week, we're going to see the Arctic Constellation shooting up into very positive territory. So this is happening at the same time as we're increasing westerly flow and turning things milder. So the reason we're turning things milder and increasing where western is, is that we're losing the blocking signal over the North Pole. 
Now, it's going to be end of December, and I assume it's taking us even into the start of January. We see a huge amount of scatter here within the Arctic Oscillation so uh, forecast. So we've got several um, ensemble members of the GFS model that are very positive with the Arctic Oscillation, but several that are plunging down into negative or even very negative territory. So this tells us as we're going through to the end of the year, we are probably seeing... Um, a lot of confusion uh, beginning to appear and clearly it's up for grabs really what's going to happen as we get beyond the Christmas period and into the start of 2018. We may keep that zonal westerly flow going. These on some members that are very positive with the AO, those will be doing that. But I think more actually are going a little bit negative here as we go into uh, the start of uh, next year. So it's a bit up the grabs, but maybe we can uh, think a bit about the chance of colder weather returning perhaps through the early part of uh, January. I wouldn't be all that surprised. Uh, this is the North Atlantic Oscillation observed and forecast chart. Again, the same idea. Black line tells where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation. The red line's at the end where GFS Sumbles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation. We're just on the uh, positive side of neutral at the moment. And uh, the forecast is to keep things generally neutral to positive going into the end of the year. But similar with the North Atlantic Oscillation, we have, similar with the Arctic Oscillation, I should say, the North Atlantic Oscillation is showing rather a split between some ensemble members that are very positive with the North Atlantic Oscillation by the end of the year and the start of 2018, but several that are going down into negative territory. The split between those on some members isn't as dramatic as what we see with the Arctic Oscillation uh, forecast, but uh, clearly it, we have got uncertainty here by the time we get through to the end of the year and the start of 2018. There are various options on the table and some of them would be to turn things really quite cold. What's happening in the stratosphere is connected to uh, this, of course. So um, these are the current temperatures, or this is the current temperature, at um, 30 HPA over the uh, North Pole. The grey line here is the trend line for the stratospheric temperature. So we're almost at the coldest point of the year now uh, for stratospheric temperatures, which is like, kind of like the top um, level of the atmosphere. It's above the troposphere where weather is taking place. Um, so it's between sort of the troposphere and at the top level of the atmosphere. So at 30 HPA, uh, we've actually been a little bit warmer than our average over the past um, few months. So this is December just here, dates on the bottom. We started uh, December on a relatively cold note, but um, it's gone through uh, the first half of December, have been a little bit warmer than average, in fact, with those temperatures at 30 HPA in the stratosphere. That's where we are right now. Still a little bit warmer than average, still above the grey line. This isn't a stratospheric warming. It certainly isn't a sudden stratospheric warming uh, that we would do something like that with black line uh, if we had a sudden stratospheric warming. So it's not that, but uh, it is a little bit warmer than average at 30 HPA. We go a bit higher to 10 HPA. And uh, again, the same same idea. The grey line is the trend line. The black line uh, shows where we have been and where we are with those temperatures at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. That's where we are right now, a little bit under the grey line. So go a bit further up to 10 HPA. It's slightly colder than average. Uh, a little bit lower down at 30 HPA. It's actually a little bit warmer than average. Certainly not a great deviation from uh, the average, though, from that uh, grey line at this point. Any sign of a stratospheric warming? Well, these are the uh, GFS um, forecast for the temperature at 10 HPA over the North Pole. These blue colours are the um, cold temperatures that we've got at uh, 10 HPA uh, at the moment. We're looking to infiltrate sort of greens, uh, yellows, and if we can, oranges and reds, into the stratosphere. When you see the red colours turning up, that's genuine sudden stratospheric warming uh, sort of territory. So we're starting on Christmas Day here. Let's run through the final week of uh, December. So you'll notice these yellow colours are appearing over towards Siberia. That's uh, temperatures warming up at 10 HPA in the stratosphere over towards Siberia. Not penetrating at this point, 30th of December, 
into the uh, North Pole. Let's run through to the end of this GFS run, and that takes us to the 2nd of January, when again we've got these uh, green and yellow colours around Siberia, but again they're not pushing into the pole, so at the moment there's no sign to the uh, early part of January of a particularly pronounced warming, certainly no sign of a sudden stratospheric warming. A few days ago, the GFS uh, model was um, sort of flirting with the idea that we might get a bit of a, uh, certainly a, quite a major warming, perhaps not a sudden stratospheric warming, but certainly it was flirting with the idea that we may get a fairly significant warming uh, around the Christmas and New Year period. I think it's backed off from that idea uh, at the moment. We'll have to wait and see whether it starts to bring it back. This is how the East Central UF is uh, forecasting the temperatures at uh, 10 HPA in the stratosphere. Uh, we go to day 10 uh, with uh, this takes us to, uh, I think it takes us to Boxing Day. Um, and again, very similar really to what the GFS is uh, showing. This is the North Pole uh, just here on this channel. I haven't shown you these so far, this uh, this sort of season, but you'll be seeing more of these in the next few weeks. Um, this is the North Pole just there, where we've got that uh, cross just there. So again, we've got the um, mid-latitudes around the edges of the North Pole. Uh, this is sort of Siberia area over here, and again, you can see that uh, by Boxing Day, the e 7 f model is forecasting at 10 HPA a fairly modest warming to be starting to gather over boxing uh, over Siberia around the boxing day period but certainly no sign of that pushing in towards the North Pole certainly no sign that it's going up to uh, sudden stratospheric warming type levels at the moment so a bit of a modest warming could occur uh, towards the end of the year around Siberia at this stage we're not seeing any great evidence that we're going to push out into the North Pole but we'll, we'll wait and see how that um, pans out Right, GFS uh, temperature and precipitation ensembles, next couple of weeks. We're just looking at London today. So the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. And the temperatures are on the, on the up now. We're starting off around there quite cold, but by tomorrow we're going to be milder than average. And then essentially, it looks like we're keeping it milder than average for the rest of the year. So these are our dates along the side. Takes into the start of the new year just uh, there and you see that we are generally trending above average through uh, through the next couple of weeks. There are some colder interludes and one of those actually is occurring around Christmas Day. Interestingly, we do see several ensemble members that are dipping down a bit on Christmas Day. That's happening because we're putting down a polar maritime airstream on Christmas Day. So there could be some wintry showers in the far north and northwest, but there won't be widespread snow, I wouldn't have thought, on um, Christmas Day. And then after that, probably turning a bit stormy for Boxy Day. That seems to be the way we're firming up for our Christmas weather at the moment. I'll talk to you um, through that uh, the, uh, in the latter stages of the video. But essentially, it looks like we're keeping things relatively mild through um, most of the rest of this year, except we may be seeing slight cooling uh, trend happening there right at the very end of the year inside of uh, 2018. The white line, which is the ensemble mean, is dipping down a little bit at that point. But I think that's too far away to um, really take seriously. In terms of precipitation, it looks like turning things more unsettled as well. So we've got rain today, which is introducing the uh, milder airflow, of course. Remember, could be quite a lot of fog, though early this week across eastern Britain, so you may not feel the effects of those milder temperatures for a little while until the middle part of the week. Uh, then the middle and last stage of the week, quite dry. From the weekend onwards, it's turning more unsettled. And actually, I've got a proper wet spell setting up there for the end of the year after Christmas. It does look as though it might turn quite wet, and uh, it would be mild, though, during that period. These are the surface temperature and air pressure ensembles for London. So we're starting off quite cold, of course, at the moment. And uh, not lifting those surface uh, temperatures up as much as you might have thought we would um, uh, over the next two or three days. So we're sticking in London. We're sticking generally under five degrees until the middle part of the week. And again, that is mainly down to the effect of uh, fog. And we could well have some quite cold nights as well. From middle of the week onwards, yes, the temperatures do lift up, going up to around 10 degrees then, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. But then a little bit of a dip again as we go up towards the 
uh, Christmas period. And then rather up or down, up and down really, over Christmas. So we have a milder day there, around the 23rd. Then um, around Christmas itself, we go a bit colder. Then Boxing Day, we're going a bit milder again. Uh, and that takes us through towards around the 29th. And then after that, it looks like we are seeing a cooling trend appearing then. So uh, let's uh, show you how we're going up and down. So we're doing something a bit like that over the um, next, uh, the next uh, sort of 10 days. Uh, but then as we go towards the end of the year and start of 2018... I think we do see a little bit of a cooling trend beginning to appear there. Maybe some quite cold nights re-emerging right at the very end of the year as well. Air pressure is looking like this. So we're going to have very high pressure for much of the coming week. But around the Christmas period, a real dip in air pressure is taking place. Some uh, very, very low pressure ensemble members indeed going down to 980 970 millibars uh the ensemble mean itself is going down to around a thousand millibars so that again it's telling us we are going to go into much more unsettled potentially quite stormy phase just around the christmas period maybe by the end of the year and into the start of january a little bit of a recovery in pressure beginning to take place that could be associated with the chance of colder conditions perhaps coming back uh for the new year Temperature anomalies are looking like this, milder than average through the UK and Ireland. Many parts of Northern Europe are coming, uh, coming out milder than average from the 17th to 25th of December. Southern Europe does look a little bit uh, colder, but it's going to be a milder than average week in the week ahead. Uh, precipitation anomalies from 17th to 25th of December, they're coming out drier than average. Expect those to trend wetter as we get closer towards the uh, Christmas period. This is how the GFS is looking for Thursday then. So we've got uh, high pressure dominating. Its centre is to our south across the northern parts of uh, France. And that's bringing up quite mild air from the south and the southwest. We go through to Friday. High pressure still dominating. Slightly cooler air mass. So on Friday, we'll see the temperatures returning back closer to average. May running up towards Christmas period, turning increasingly settled, so unsettled. So this is uh, Christmas Eve when we bring in a weather front down across the country. That'll take a band of rain with it. And then colder air comes out of Greenland behind that band of rain. And uh, that takes into our colder Christmas day. It isn't a particularly cold day, but it's a polar maritime airstream that might be cold enough to produce some... Uh, wintry showers in the far north and west of the country. You see the wind is coming in from a west or northwesterly direction for Christmas Day. <coughs> Excuse me. Then Boxing Day sees a deepening area of low pressure racing in both the Atlantic. That potentially gives us quite a stormy day on uh, Boxing Day. Now it's all a little way off, so the timings of this could change. It's not inconceivable if this stormy weather comes in a bit quicker, but we might have stormy conditions for Christmas Day. But at the moment, it seems we're firming up on the idea for Christmas, which is that Christmas Eve has a band of wet weather moving southwards and eastwards. It starts mild, but turns colder as it brightens up behind that band of wet weather. Could be wintry showers in the northwest of Scotland. Christmas Day is a mainly fine day. There could be showers in the north and west. And the air is probably cold enough for those showers to be wintry. It'll be a seasonably chilly feeling Christmas Day. Not desperately cold. And then Boxing Day looks stormy. Wet, windy, probably very mild. But we might have gale or even severe gale force winds in the northwest of the country. So that's how Christmas seems to be shaping up at moment. Bear in mind, it's a little way off, so timings on the day-to-day -day basis could change. Now, this is how things are looking for uh, Wednesday, 27th of December, just beyond Christmas, and it's looking very unsettled, really stormy conditions, turning very cold as well. Well, not very cold, but it is turning cold in the north with uh, showers going wintry there. But the main thing is the intense polar vortex that we've got going on here, really ramping up the uh, westerly signal. So gale force winds as we go through into the post-Christmas period. And uh, this takes us up to uh, day 10, or perhaps a little bit beyond day 10. That's day 10, Wednesday 27th, a little bit beyond day 10. It stays unsettled and quite cool as well. The air is coming from a northerly source point in the Atlantic. So after Christmas, it looks unsettled. It looks windy, it looks showery, and those winds will be quite cold, especially 
up in the north. This is how the East of WF is looking. So, um, we start on Thursday with a lot of dry weather, really quite mild too. That high pressure pulls away from us as we go through to the Christmas period, so it turns more unsettled. There's our band of rain coming southwards and eastwards on Christmas Eve. There's our colder, showery day for um, Christmas Day. And there's our Boxing Day storm, bringing wet, windy weather uh, in on Boxing Day. This is uh, 27th of December, as far as we can go with the ECWF. It looks quite stormy, wet and windy conditions moving through. And then probably some colder air coming in on the backside of this area of low pressure. So that's how it's showing up. Then as we go through towards the new year, maybe hints that something a little bit colder might start to emerge. Only hints at this stage for the very end of the year and the start of 2018. So I want to finish off on this. I think that at the moment we are trading really quite similar to uh, 1990. This is December the 8th, 1990. We had a cold start to um, the winter of 1990-1991. Uh, and there was a big snow event on the 8th of uh, December 1990. Now, you're never going to get light for light, so you're never going to get an exact match. But this year, the snow event happened on the 10th of December, so only a couple of days afterwards. Uh, so we had a cold first after December in 1990. Then around Christmas, went into a very stormy period. This year is the 27th of December 1990. Really stormy. Notice the pink colours around green, so strong polar vortex. Quite cold stormy weather as well. It wasn't overly mild uh, with these stormy conditions, but really windy with a lot of gales. Uh, Mad and sound weather continued into the early part of January, but the jet stream started to trend southwards, so we started to see these areas of low pressure coming further and further south, bringing actually quite wintry conditions to the northern half of the country, proper cold zonality for the early part of January 1991. That carried on through the first half of the month. Then the second half of January, we went to high pressure, uh, and there was a lot of cold and frosty but quiet weather, with that high pressure. And then, of course, it all culminated by February 1991 with those easterly winds bringing in severely cold weather from the east. Now, I'm not saying we're going to get a um, repeat of that. That was one of the coldest uh, single spells of weather of the 20th century that occurred during the early part of February 1991 with daytime maximums only around minus 4, minus 5 degrees and heavy, really heavy snow being dragged in uh, with that as well. There's over a foot of snow, for instance, in some parts of eastern Britain. And I'm not saying I'm going to get a repeat of that, because that was very extreme. But it's interesting how this December, anyway, has trended uh, quite similar to December 1990. Whether that carries on as we go through into January, we'll just have to wait and see. As I said, we may be seeing a few hints that uh, after the stormy weather just after Christmas... We might begin to bring some slightly colder weather back around the new year or into the early part of January. It's only hints at the moment, but that's the kind of thing that happened in 1990-1991. Uh, we had that um, cold first half of December, second half of December was mild, stormy, milder, stormy period around Christmas, and then, or just after Christmas, and then it trended colder for the beginning of January. we wait and see whether that's the way uh, this is going to shape up. Right, so that's it for today's first video. This evening we'll do an ensemble's watch. We'll go through all 21 members of the GFS ensemble, see what they're all showing for that uh, sort of Christmas to New Year period. Will we see any signs of colder weather at the start of 2018? With the GFS ensembles, you'll find out tonight. That's all now. Thanks for watching.